Hi, EP Calculus students. How you doing? Wow, that's a bright light on my forehead. It's kind of late at night. I just realized like I needed this video and I'm like, wow, I thought I had it. So, uh, so I'm getting it done now. <laughs> After a very long day, I hope I look acceptable. Is what I'm saying. Pre-calc 1.6, a really short um, section called parent functions, which I love the name of that, you know, so what parent functions are, are these basic um, eight functions that we have here. What would the children functions be? Those would be the transformations. And we're going to look at that 1.7, right? Because they still have the same shape, but they've been moved or rotated or something like that. Just like parents, children look like their parents, but slightly different, transformed in some way. Okay, let's take a look. These are all in your book. Constant function, horizontal line. The identity function is the y equals x line because y equals x, right? One, one is on the graph, two, two, three, three, four, four, right? Like looking at your identity in a mirror, what you see is what you get back. The absolute value function, this nice uh, V shape, um, which is actually a piecewise function made up of two different lines the y equals x line and the y equals negative x line. Uh, the square root function, right? y equals the square root of x, quadratic, y equals x squared, cubic, uh, f of x equals x cubed. This is called the rational function, one over x. Uh, some call that the reciprocal function, but that would indicate the reciprocal of some other function. So I'd like that your book calls it the rational function. The step function um, has different steps to it. Um, it has, uh, the step function is actually on your calculator and we'll look at that. It's also called the greatest integer function. So we'll look at that right here on uh, number 48. And notice, like I said, it does take these steps. What it does is it produces for any value of X that you put in, it produces the greatest integer, the integer, the, the greatest integer less than or equal to your input. Okay, now you may be like, so in other, in other words, it rounds down, right? So what I'm saying is, is if you have an X value of like three, uh, 2.7 right here, it will round it down to two. Any input you give, it will produce the greatest integer less than or equal to what you put in. So if you put in a 2.7, it's going to give you an integer. By the way, an integer doesn't have any decimal or fractional parts, right? It's just has its, its unit, okay? Um, if you put in a 3, it's going to give you a three out because it gives the greatest integer less than or equal to. So if you put it in an integer, it will give an integer out. Even if you put in a 1.999, it does not round up to two. This is a rounding down um, a function. It will give you the greatest integer less than or equal to 1.999, which is one. Now, why is this useful? because you are asked to round down all the time. You cannot go into the store three cents short and say, well, I'm really close, right? I'm just three cents short. Can you please give me this item? They will say, no, I'm sorry, you have to round down, right? We're not gonna round up for you. So this happens all the time, okay? Now, um, all we have is a fairly short video, uh, three examples, number 12. Write the linear equation given. F of negative three equals negative eight and F of one equals two. What I would want you to know is, is that this is really just function notation for that point, negative three, negative eight. When you put in negative three, X is a negative three. And when you put it into the function, you get a negative eight out. When you put a one into the function, you get a two out. Here we go. And we already did this in, in section 1.3. We know how to write an equation given two points, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Um, y, 
Y E Y minus Y one. You can tell it's late. <laughs> y minus Y one equals M X minus X one. Right, again, you could use the slope intercept form, put in the slope, find your own Y intercept. Certainly they did not give us one, but you know I always use the point slope form. Let's get the slope over here. The slope is y2 minus y1, that's two minus a negative eight is two plus eight. And one minus a negative three is one plus three, which is four. This reduces to five halves. Let's go ahead and put in, I'm, I'm liking, I'm liking the one and the two. I'm going to put that point in for my x1 and my x2. So I have y minus two equals five halves x minus one. This is perfectly acceptable. This, this is a linear equation, but most likely what they did again is put it in y equals mx plus b. So of course I'm going to distribute because y equals mx plus b doesn't have parentheses in it, right? And the y is alone. So I'm gonna add a two to both sides. So if you don't mind, I'm going to distribute here and I'm going to add a two to both sides and I get y equals a, a five halves x and then I have a negative five halves plus two, okay. Let's talk about this. A negative five halves plus two is a negative five halves plus four halves, right? That's two, right? A negative five halves plus four halves is a minus one half. My writing is poor. There we go. Okay. So, this is just, you've been given two points and they're asking you to write the equation of a line. Let's look at the step function. Okay, we've talked about what the step function does. Okay, it is shown as two brackets, not like on the absolute value where you have one set of thin brackets. This is the, uh, this is the greatest step function. So it does work as parentheses. So what we do is, we do put the five in first and we do the math that's on the inside. And the last thing we're gonna do is give the greatest integer less than or equal to our value inside. So let's take a look. This would give us five times one half is five halves. So that's 2.5 plus six, so 8.5. The greatest integer less than or equal to 8.5 is eight. Now, how do you do that on your calculator? There is a greatest integer function on your calculator. So when you turn it on and you go to math and you go down to, oh, you go over to number. I'll write this down. So it's math and then number, which is one to the right and you go number five. Yep, okay. So I did math and then number. Let's find a good spot in number five, INT. It says INT. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to do one half times five plus six. And it does in fact output an eight. We did good, we did well. That's why I don't take, take English. Well, speak English. Oh my goodness, really? Really? Okay. <laughs> All right. What about if you put in a negative 6.1? Okay, let's go ahead and do that. A negative 6.1, half of that is a negative 3.05 plus 6 is 2.95. Now class, I know that this is super close to three. It does not matter how close it is to three. The, the greatest integer function or the step function will produce the greatest integer less than or equal to 2.95, which is a two. Again, if you're really close to buying three items at Meijer, but you're short money, they're gonna make you buy two. You're not gonna buy three. Let's go ahead and put that in, math number. Number five, INT, 
let's do um, a half times a negative 6.1, and let's add a 6 to that, close it off. Sure enough, we get a 2. We're doing really well. Okay, now, this is probably the hardest part. Do you remember graphing piecewise functions? I have to tell you that piecewise functions, especially in calculus, and please remember, this class is called pre-calculus, is the rule, not the exception. This piecewise functions happens all the time. It's not just something weird that we study. Okay, same with the absolute value function. We use it all the time, okay? You're gonna find out later, I know this is only section 1.6, but in 2.3 is polynomial and synthetic division of polynomials. You would be like, when am I ever gonna use this? In calculus, we just used it last week. So, so I promise you, I know what you're gonna see. Okay, so what if you're asked, this is a problem like number 64. What if you're asked to graph x squared, okay? Now you know what that looks like. You could graph it if I just asked you to graph x squared. Right here it is. But it's only gonna happen where x is less than or equal to zero, okay? What if I asked you to graph the line x minus one, how to graph that, y intercept of a negative one slope of one, right? You would know how to put that across the graph, but we're just gonna make it happen from zero to four. And then to graph the, um, the constant f of x or y equals two. You know that's a horizontal line where y equals two. It's a constant over here. You would be able to graph it. We're just gonna graph it where x is greater than or equal to four. Okay, so how do we do this? What we do is, let's just get it started. Right here, let's do y equals x squared. Now, it starts where x is less than or equal to zero. Because as it's a starting point, we need to start a point, right? So let's go ahead and do it. We're starting where x is zero, right? So when we put a zero into the function, we get a zero out. So we'll record this point here. It will be closed because of the equal sign. I, I'm hoping you remember open and closed circles. Let's just put that right here. A closed circle is less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, an open circle is less than or greater than. How come, right? It's just like when you were bubbling in a sheet, you know, um, a data director sheet, um, a zip grade sheet, anything multiple choice. When you feel the answer equals something, you color it in, right? When you feel that it doesn't, you leave it open. So it's easy to remember, okay? How do I graph the rest of uh, y equals x squared? You know what it looks like, but let's just use points to help ourselves. It's only happening where x is less than or equal to zero. So let's get some points to help ourselves. Let's go to where x is a negative one, right? That's less than zero. When you put a negative one in, you get a one out. Let's graph that point. Let's help ourselves a little bit more. Let's pick negative two, right? Negative two is less than zero. When you put a negative two in, you get a four out, right? And now you can really start to see that parabola. Okay, I got, I have the first part done. So just pick points to help yourself. Okay, let's move to the line. Y equals X minus one. Okay, let's do that in blue. Okay, what should we do? Well, it starts where X is zero and it ends where X is four. So let's get it started and let's end it. And because it's a line, we only need two points, right? So we're good. Okay, so when you put a zero into the function zero minus one, you get a negative one out, right? So start, I'm starting this line at zero, negative one. We knew that, right? That was, that's the y-intercept. Because there's no equal sign, I'm gonna put an open circle. Here we go. Let's end it. 
where x equals four, when you put a four in, you get a three out. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three. There we go. Again, an open circle, because there's no equal sign. That's all we need to make a line, right, two points. If I felt I needed more points, right, I would just pick more x's in between zero and four. Pick x to be one or two or three, put it into the equation and graph the points. Okay, let's do the last line. This one luckily is the easiest. It starts where, let me find a different color. I don't know if I have any. We'll just use black. The horizontal line y equals two. It starts where x equals four. One, two, three, four, right up to two. It is a closed circle because of the equal sign here. And it's for all the x's greater than four, right? Five, six, and on and on and on. And there, there we go. We have graphed a piecewise function. So I hope you have a great night. Thanks for hanging out with me.